Hello YouTube, today I wanted to chat about some of the things that I've learned through living in France over the last five years around the things you do not do in France, whether that be you're visiting or you've just moved here or you're living here. I'm talking about those kinds of social faux pas. A faux pas is of course a French word and it literally means a false step. But we're talking about those social blunders, those things that kind of violate social norms, and the things that are just gonna make you stand out here. You'll probably notice as we go through the list that I am speaking from experience in most of these cases. The times that I've absolutely embarrassed myself or I wasn't really sure of the etiquette. And so I'm sharing these hard earned lessons with you guys so that you don't make the same mistakes. So with all that said and done, let's move on to the things that you do not do in France. The first thing that you should not be doing here in France is speaking too loudly. Inside voices, people. If you're in a public place, if you're in a supermarket, if you're standing in a queue, if you're on the metro system in Paris, you definitely should use your inside voices and don't speak too loudly. The French definitely have quieter, more subtle voices and they don't come across as very loud and very brash and very, you know, overly excited and enthusiastic and loud when they're in public places at least. I've noticed that the French can be quite adverse to noise in general, so you will definitely get dirty looks if you're speaking too loudly. You've got to just group together, stay a bit hush-hush, and talk amongst yourselves. You'll notice if you take the metro in Paris, for example, that it's almost always deadly silent. Not only speaking with a super loud voice and saying, hi, how are you? Not only is that disturbing to the French ears, I think, but it also immediately pinpoints you as a foreigner and it can make you quite an easy target for pickpockets. The next thing that you do not do in France is to ask a French person what part of Paris they come from. <laughs> because a lot of the French people in Paris are not from Paris and they're very proud of the fact that they're not from Paris. There's definitely like this national thing between people who live in Paris, the Parisians, versus the French people that live outside of Paris. Um, as many, many French people tell me, Paris is not France. If you ask someone who's here for the weekend from the Pyrenees and you meet them and you say, oh, what part of Paris are you from? They'll be like, ugh, typical ignorant tourist. <laughs> and we do not want that. The next thing that you do not do in France is not to control your kids. In France, the approach to parenting is perhaps a little bit more structured and disciplined than what we'd be used to in US, Australia, New Zealand, maybe even the UK. And in general, as a result, you do find that their kids are quite quiet and well behaved in public. I know what you're thinking, kids will be kids, but I'm just warning you that it could come with some pretty dirty looks. I've been on the TGV train system a few times here in France and there have been, you know, little six month old babies playing with keys. And obviously when you're banging keys on a table and stuff, it makes a clanking kind of noise. There were several French people who were giving the parents eyes like this, like. There were even women who were sort of turning around and going, shh, and they start sort of getting quite agitated and they may even huff and puff it like. If you aren't showing that you're in control of your kids and making sure that they're respecting their environment around them and keeping the noise levels low, you may be told off or scorned by French people. So although we may be used to letting our kids run free in restaurants because they're too bored sitting at the table, that's not really okay here. The next social faux pas will come in handy if you are to eat with the French or be invited around to a French person's home to enjoy a meal. Just know that you never start eating before every person at the table has been served and there's a definite moment where you can tell where it's okay to start and usually that's by the host or hostess who will kind of pick up their cutlery and say bon appetit and they'll start making the gesture that it's okay to start eating and that's when you can start eating. On that note, never serve yourself a drink before offering to serve everyone else at the table. The next social faux pas to keep in mind is don't flaunt your money. Really not appreciated to flaunt successes and riches, you know, the big blingy diamonds, talking about how you got a big promotion and a big raise at work. 
These kinds of things are definitely not appreciated in the French culture. You should never make people around you feel inferior to you. And so showing off your money could potentially be a way to make other people feel inferior to you or that they have less than you. You may not even realize you're doing it. It may be as simple as talking about your brand new car and then mentioning the price that you bought it at. While that might be sort of okay for us to talk about money, in France it could be seen as bragging or sort of sending signals about how much wealth you have. So just be careful about that kind of thing. If you're lucky enough to be invited to a party in France, be careful not to show up on time. In France you do hear about this quart d'heure de politesse and it basically translates to the polite 15 minutes which means in general you should show up maybe 10 to 15 minutes late but it completely depends on the people, it depends on the region. But just keep in mind that turning up perfectly on time may be a source of stress or inconvenience for the host or hostess because they may not be perfectly ready yet. I think in general you're playing it safe if you turn up maybe 10 to 15 minutes late. And speaking of showing up to parties, don't show up to parties without bringing something. I know that this is probably quite universal, but even if the host says, no, 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 don't worry about it, don't bring something, really sort of insist. And a really classic thing to take, just so that you don't turn up empty handed at least, is a nice fresh baguette from the bakery if you've been invited around to dinner, for example. The next social faux pas would be to turn up to any sort of social gathering or situation, whether that be with two people or 10 people, and not say hello to everybody and when you leave say goodbye to everybody and yes this can be a hassle like if you're at a party with 40 people it can be quite annoying going around the whole room doing la bise saying Rosie enchanté Rosie enchanté you know it does get a little bit repetitive but it's very important. And when you say goodbye, ideally it would be nice to if you said goodbye to every person as well. The next thing not to do in France may seem a little bit illogical, but don't be too friendly. So I remember when I arrived in France, one of the first cities that I went to was Montpellier. I just did the New Zealand way. So I got onto the tram system with people, public transport, and I'd smile at people and say bonjour and sit right beside them and say bonjour, comment allez-vous? And once, you know, this little old lady actually took her handbag and slightly turned away from me like, please don't steal my bag. <laughs> and it was in this moment where I realized oh, this is not normal here. And this was in the south of France. I mean, it's even worse in Paris. If you're smiling at people, they may get a bit freaked out. They may be a bit skeptical of you. Like, what does this person want from me? And then actually, even when you get to know people a little bit more, don't get too personal too quickly. So even though you may be completely comfortable talking about love, sex, that boss you hate, the fight you and your partner had the other week, that may make some French people feel a little bit embarrassed. That's a lot, you know, up front for them, for someone that they don't know so well. So definitely just let them take the lead in terms of the level of conversation and see where they go with it because you don't want to come on too strong too soon. The next one may be obvious because you are of course in France but sometimes it's pretty hard to resist. Don't hug French people. <laughs> well at least the ones that you don't know very very well. I think in France sometimes family members hug sometimes. In France, of course, you've got to do la bise, the cheek kissing, because if you hug a French person, they'll probably feel very uncomfortable, like, what is happening? What is happening? It feels so intimate for them. I know for us, the thought of kissing is very intimate, and we're like, wow, that's so intimate that you have to kiss strangers. But for them, a hug, you know, it's full body to body, and actually for them, that's a lot more intimate than the cheek kissing. So the next faux pas are when you're eating out in a restaurant, for example. Um, in general, I wouldn't ask for a doggy bag. I find in France that they're pretty good at serving you the right portion sizes anyways. I have had some French people advise me as well that you shouldn't have a soft drink with lots of ice in it with a good meal. I would also say just while we're on the topic of eating out in France is not really to ask for a lot of modifications to the meal. You may ask to get your eggs benedict with your hollandaise sauce on the side, or you may order a salad and ask for the dressing to be put on the side so that you're in control of how much dressing that you put on. 
in France again this is something that they usually are quite good at and they usually do get right so there's not usually any need to ask for these kinds of modifications to the meal the next faux pas is not to complain too much about things that the French have fought really hard for and a concrete example of this is complaining that there's no shops open on the Sundays for example so oh no shops open on Sundays I don't know how you guys survive it's so inconvenient or the fact that the French only work 35 hours a week you know France has a long history of fighting for their rights and achieving extremely high levels of social protection. So just be a little bit careful when you're making jokes on these kinds of topics because they may be a little bit sensitive to those. So that's all I had on my list for today, guys. I've got some awesome French people who are subscribed to my channel, so I hope they'll help us out down below by mentioning some more things that could be seen as a bit of a social faux pas. But in general, of course, if you are coming to France for the first time or thinking of visiting again, just remember that Paris is the number one tourist destination of the world. So if you do make any little faux pas, honestly, they would have seen it all before. Don't be too worried about it. Don't be stressed about coming. I just hope that this might help in a little way so that you don't make any of the major ones. So that's all from me for this time, guys. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Until next time, a bientôt!